What's going on, Triad? Peace and happy Black History Month. It's your man, Kurt, Triad Hip Hop Podcast. Um, I wanted to do this uh, segment that me and Howie call Lost in Thought, where we kind of just talk about something that's, um, you know, an important issue and that's something that kind of weighs heavily on the mind, you know, good conversation, you know, let's, let's you know, let's go ahead and uh, chop it up, you know what I mean? So, uh, usually we like to try to do something during Black History Month, you know, just to kind of pay tribute, even though Black History is every month. You know what I mean? This is more like just the anniversary, you know what I mean? Just to keep us reminded. So, you know, we, we, we have to do stuff like this more often. So anyway, um, I wanted to, you know, talk about something that was uh, pretty important to me and significant to the area that I live in right now. So something, and, and I'm going to, I took a lot of notes because I don't want to forget anything. So pardon me if it looks like I'm reading uh, off of something. It's just notes that I put on my um, device here just to keep me reminded. So anyway, um, but basically it's, it's something that kind of makes February even more significant in regards to black history, uh, which was an event that took place on February 1st, 1960. So it was a group of four college students um, from North Carolina A&T State University, which is, an, which is a uh, historically black college or university uh, right here in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, these four students uh, who were Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Ezell Blair Jr., and David Richmond, uh, they were basically aware of kind of some social unbalance uh, and, and injustice that was going on, and they were just tired of it, you know, and they decided to basically stand up to it. So there's this, basically this well-known store uh, called F.W. Woolworths, uh, which was in within a mile from the school, you know, uh, Woolworths is right in the downtown area of the city, and a and is right outside of that, within a mile from that. Um, so basically, uh, they had, now the, the students, uh, you know, they would go over there sometimes to get standard items. Well, you know, Woolworths is a lot like Walmart. You know, they just carry the everyday items or whatever. So, um, but the only difference was they also had like a little food court or food counter that you can order a hot meal from. Uh, so, you know, if you were, if you were in there shopping. Now, the Woolworths Corporation as a whole, they, uh, they didn't really have any rules about segregation or anything like that. They didn't make any specifications on it. You know, they didn't say one way or another. What they did was they would leave it up to the individual store manager to say, you know, here's how I'm going to treat this. Um, and so the basically the a lot of the southern Woolworths, uh, Greensboro included, their stores would, you know, decide to do segregation and things like that. So basically, um, they would, they basically, they made it seem like it was, they were good because they would allow black people to shop in the main part of the store. But when it came to the food counter, they were like, no, this is whites only for the food. You can spend your money here over in there. You can go buy some cough medicine or whatever, you know, whatever everyday items you need, tissue, you know, water, blah, 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 all those, you know, uh, uh, previously packaged items, you, you're welcome to do that, but don't come over here to this whites only counter. You know what I mean? We don't want your kind here. Now, what's funny is, um, you know, they had black people working at the food counter. You know what I mean? They had them there. They were there. They could work behind the counter and serve people, but they were not allowed to eat there. So you can you can work here, but you're not allowed to eat at the very establishment you work at. So yeah, I think that's kind of uh, kind of ironic. So you know, basically, um, these four students were were tired of the hypocrisy and decided to plan what was known as a sit-in. 
you know, which is something that had been going on a little bit. You know, we had Rosa Parks. You know, it all kind of goes back way back to even like Mahatma Gandhi. You know, basically he did his peaceful protest. And it was a, basically a way to say, you know what? I'm going to sit here until justice is made right. You know what I mean? So they basically, the four students went into the store and they purposely bought a few items from the main part of the store uh, so that they could be considered, you know, paying customers. Um, and then they proceeded to the food counter and they simply waited, you know, just to see what was going to happen. And so uh, after being told by the staff that they would not be served and that they should leave, uh, they sat peacefully and simply waited. You know what I mean? Eventually, as you probably know, uh, or guessed, uh, a police officer arrived and now that was making them a little nervous. You know what I mean? Once the cops get called, you know, you start thinking, because this is like 1960, so we're still dealing with a lot of, you know, racial injustice. You know what I mean? The cops don't care about rules of humanity. They're more so like, look, you 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 out of line. You know what I mean? Uh, so we're going to have to deal with you. So once the w once this officer came, you know, now they're getting like nervous and whatnot. So they're like, you know, trying to think to themselves, like, what are we going to do? We can, you know, we can get cracked over the head. You know what I mean? He might just start physically manhandling us. You know what I mean? So, um, so uh, 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 the officer basically, you know, kind of paced back and forth for a few minutes. And after they realized, you know, he wasn't doing anything, they kind of knew, okay, we got him. You know what I mean? Because once they realized, okay, if he was going to do something, he would have done it by now. You know what I mean? So, you know, that kind of gave him a little more confidence. Like, okay, okay, we're doing the right thing. So let's stick to our guns or whatever. So when they, they basically sat there for the rest of the day, wouldn't move, you know, they sat there until the store closed and then they finally got up and left. Now, um, the, the press was outside kind of waiting to see what would happen. So when they walked out, the press, you know, one of the reporters was like, oh man, what's, so what are you guys going to do now? And, um, one of them said, you know, we're going to keep coming back until you serve us, period. You know what I mean? We're not, we're not going to, we're not going to keep playing this game. We're tired of it. And so they came back the next day, did the same thing, went to the counter, found four seats, sat there and would not move. And the beautiful thing about it was when they came back, more students joined in and came in and sat with them. So now you're really getting under the white folks' uh, skin because now they're like, okay, so now you're taking up seats that we should have access to. You know what I mean? Now you won't even move. So, you know, that um, was the beautiful thing about it. You know, they, they weren't doing anything. They were peacefully protesting, nonviolent, just kind of saying, hey, we're going to sit here until something changes, period. So, um uh, the first day, like I said, it was the four of them. The second day uh, and the third and the fourth, each day they would just get more and more people that was coming down there to be with them and support them. You know, and what was funny, um, as the story goes, they say that one of the waitresses or servers behind the counter was a black lady. And she even kind of mocked them saying, you know, what are you doing? You know, you're 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 discrediting you know your race you know what i mean you're making us all look bad that kind of thing um but as it so happens on the flip side on the opposite side of that same coin there was a white lady who also uh, was sitting at the counter um and kind of watched them do what they were doing and she sat there almost the whole day too just kind of watching to see what was going to happen and Eventually, right before she left, she walked up to a couple of them and she said, you know, boys, I'm disappointed. You know what I mean? And they were like, one of them was like, I'm sorry, man, what are you disappointed at? I don't even know you. How could you be disappointed at me? And she said, I'm disappointed because it took so long for someone like you to do this and stand up. So that also gave him that extra boost of confidence that yes, we're doing the right thing. 
So you, on the one hand, you got the black lady saying, you need to cut it out, go home, you, you're embarrassing the race. And then you got a white lady who's finally like, nah, you're doing the right thing. Keep it up. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of that situation. Um, and then eventually, you know, uh, when the cops wouldn't do anything, you know, the customers, uh, the white customers who, you know, didn't like it, they would come by and basically harass them, taunt them, call them names, racial slurs. And even I heard even uh, that they even got spit on. But, you know, never once did they move. You know what I mean? That's what I loved about this. They were unmoved because they knew if we keep doing this, eventually something's going to happen. So um, eventually, you know, uh, uh, later that year, the store was desegregated and the store, you know, it even stayed open until about 1993. So, you know, eventually, of course, in the end, you know, justice did prevail and, you know, things were made right. And it's sad that it took so long, but, you know, they were able to get it done because they stood for what was right. You know what I mean? And they didn't uh, they didn't let anything deter them. They didn't, uh, you know, they didn't change their mind and say, oh, well, it's not working. Let's just give up. You know what I mean? They made sure. And then they also sparked a lot more sit-ins around the country at other schools, at other Woolworths, you know, other other food places that wouldn't let us eat there. You know what I mean? So we have to be thankful to people like that because they open doors that we, we don't even realize. You know what I mean? Some of us don't even realize that you have a certain amount of privilege because of people like that. You know what I mean? You have the right to eat at a certain place. You have the right to drink from, you know, same water fountains instead of separate water fountains same bathrooms instead of, you know, separate bathrooms because somebody stood up and fought for what's right. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, you know, these days they've uh, taken the store, this Woolworths uh, store, and turned it into a civil rights black history museum, uh, which I have actually frequented a few times. So, so um, you know, the, the point of this whole, you know, story is, is kind of twofold, you know, and I, so I'll get into that in just a minute, but um, I do want to say this, you know, the store closed in 93, and I moved here in uh, early 91, and so, you know, I was still kind of young, so my father uh, took me and my older brother down to that Woolworths, and, uh, you know, he shopped, and we actually even ate in the food counter, you know, at at, uh, at that food counter, and so, you know, when I was young, I didn't know because we had just gotten here. We had just moved here, so I didn't know nothing about the history. But, you know, I feel like he probably did it on purpose just to make sure that we understood, you know, the significance. Uh, one day we'll figure out the significance of this place, um, you know, and, and you know, now I do know, you know what I mean? And so I'm, I'm glad that I, you know, allowed myself to be educated because some people, there's people who probably live around here who don't even really know the story. You know what I mean? Um, especially in this day and age that we live in, nobody wants to delve into history and find out who opened these doors for us that we have access to. So, you know, like I said, my point of uh, this whole thing was twofold. Um, number one is, is Black History Month. And so, you know, we need to be reminded about the sacrifices and the importance of black people in this country and just how much we've done to bring progression to this country. But two, you know, I, the second thing is I just want to remind people to stand up for what's right. You know what I mean? And, and not only that, you know, since we are a podcast that mainly talks about hip hop, you know, stand up for hip hop as well, because there's a lot of people who, you know, were ride or die in the early stages of hip hop that open doors for these new artists. Um, and that's why it's important to acknowledge them. You know what I mean? You have to acknowledge people like the Cold Crush, you know, that some of these young uh, artists don't even know about because no matter what happened, they got cheated out of so much money. You know what I mean? And they were putting music out everywhere. They were putting out, you know, what we would consider like mixtapes and stuff like that. 
wasn't called mixtapes, but, you know, they used to call them cold crush tapes. And, you know, uh, tapes of them just rapping and, you know what I mean, doing the hip hop thing. You know what I mean? So these people were opening doors because they were like, even if, you know, the corporations won't do the right thing, we still have such a love for this hip hop thing, this culture, this art that we've created that we have to keep doing it because this is what helps us to stay happy, a certain level of sanity, you know what I mean? To escape uh, the, the chaos of the world, you know what I mean? Just like when Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five did the message, you know what I mean? Melly Mel, you know, talked about, you know, broken glass everywhere. You know what I mean? He was, the whole rap was about, look at all this chaos going on. You know what I mean? And we have to not only deal with it, but we have to find a way to step out of that chaos and still say, I'm not going to get involved in it. You know what I mean? I'm going to do the right thing. You know what I mean? And I don't have to, I may live in it, but I don't have to live in it, if that makes sense. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of point that out because the whole story of the Greensboro Four, which is what they call those four gentlemen, the Greensboro Four, um, you know, that, that carries over into everything. You know what I mean? There's a lot of hip hop artists right now who had to do virtually the same type of thing, refuse to do what, what, what they were being commanded to do just so that another door could be open. You know what I mean? It's so, it took so long, but right now these, these young artists are getting like a lot more paper than some of the better artists of the, uh, former times, you know, who probably had more skill, more talent, but were getting underpaid, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's like they opened a lot of doors. So just kind of keep that in mind, you know what I mean? And I appreciate y'all listening to me. I, I, I ran it a little bit, but, you know, I can get kind of passionate about stuff like that. So pardon my, uh, you know, my rant. But anyway, this is your man, Kurt. Triad Hip Hop Podcast. Never forget, always learn your history. And, you know, whether that comes to black history or hip hop history, whatever history, world history, you know what I mean? Learn about everything that went on in the past and how we got where we are right now. You know what I mean? So for Triad Hip Hop Podcast, this is your man, Kurt. I'll see you on the next one. All right. Peace.